Are we recording? What does that mean? We are. Okay. Let's just go right into this, right? Let's get into it. What Welcome is- to Free Range American Podcast. We're actually going to start it off, you know? Say hi to the to the viewers, the listeners across the board. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hello. Great. We're here at the BRCC office. We don't really know what we're going to talk we about said today. Hi. Well, yeah, we can talk about this. Episode. We can talk about Evan's passive-aggressive invitation towards me on uh, on a wilderness trip. It was there was nothing passive aggressive about it. It was, it was very direct. It was aggressive. It was, I think I it was hey, you. you're invited, but your fat ass ain't gonna live <laughs> through it. <laughs> That's very true. You wouldn't expect anything less. Like, well, he knows I, I don't want to go. If it we're talking about walking sixty miles yeah. oh, of remote wilderness, no, like, very no, remote wilderness. No. Three and a half hours just to drive from the nearest point. We're going to have to carry our own fuel to get there and back depending and it it's just going to be a real grinder is what but, yeah but the thing that is is logan and i've been talking about this the fish that we're going to pull out of this thing so incredible well can i preface with this i've been on three fishing trips with you and not caught one fish I you guys only went recall, bass fishing in Missouri. And I, that wasn't our fishing trip. That was Bass Pro Shop no, with Johnny I Morris. I set of that up with my fish. friend Johnny. <laughs> no. I went on a fishing trip with him, and we didn't catch anything hey, but a sandwich. That's why they call it fishing. And I took you guys on catch. one fishing trip, and we caught like 60 fish. Yes, it was a pond at my friend's house that sucked, <laughs> but it was still a fishing trip. Yeah. So the rest is semantics. I did three I, fishing trips. Where I, I recall one where we went to the salmon, salmon river. Yep. Where was the Where were the other two? Technically, oh, we stopped at a river and fished. We did. Th- okay, come on, that is not fair <laughs> whatsoever. We were We were in McCall. Is that the other one that you're talking about? When I we went so. to McCall, where we were, yeah, where we, we, we set up a hammock. Yeah, <laughs> and we set up a hammock. But we still the action of fishing still occurred. Kind of. Maybe. Maybe. That's a kind stretch. Of fish. Well, I think... I've like, taken Logan on a fishing trip and him. They both But caught. we forgot the bait. Hold on. <laughs> I took Logan and Jared on another fishing trip, and I totally redeemed myself on the middle fork of the salmon last okay. year. Both of them... Jared wasn't hungry enough to do serious fishing, uh, or he was too inebriated, I'm not sure. But Logan, you caught... Oh, Quite a few. And you did take everyone on a vacation other than me because I had to stay back and work to Guatemala. It was a great was a vacation. Coffee, that was a coffee sourcing trip. It was trip. a great yeah. vacation, and you guys caught some great fish. So, I, am, okay. I, I, I am sad I missed Guatemala. That's right. You it didn't looked, go, did you? It looked really fun. Yeah. It, it was, it was 13, a good really fun. 13 sailfish. Like that. 13? Like seven hours. Fish? Damn. No. Yeah. Are you getting a trend here, Jared, where Evan and Logan say it's a work trip because they take well, one camera and then they just go have a bunch here's of fun my, fish? Here's my question. Here's, here's my, my – <laughs> I'm going to throw this out. I vote that we should do this, but after you and Logan do your crazy, like, let's almost die trip, um, we should each get uh, a, a month – a budget and allowed to, to to create the trip for content. A one month? No, trip? no, 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 no. You just you say, hey, your stupid trip that I'm going to hate can be in in July. No, I don't. Well, here's the thing. I don't want to go on a trip with you because it will be it will be <laughs> dangerous <laughs> only in the aspects of the things that we're eating will be questionable for sure. That will be a, a, a solid. There will be multi-course meals everywhere we go, which, you know, I, I, I mean, as much as I love you, I, I, I don't know if I could do a trip where all we do is eat like, gas station food. Because I, no, 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 no. I think your favorite trip, this is Jared's favorite trip <laughs> that he would go on. It would be, we're going to go on a trip. And I planned it out, and you're just getting in the car and going. Jared would just drive around the United States in the loudest Jeep I've ever been in. It does shake a lot. Playing <laughs> Blink-182 and stopping at gas stations to eat burritos. And he would keep me in the car for over a week. Do you ever and notice how Jared... That's what he would do. And then he would rent one room with one bed. Yeah. We, would have to, we would have to sleep in the same room. We'd yeah. have to be in the same hotel. we have to drive around in his loud Jeep eating gas station food. Yeah. In my mind, that's the perfect Jared trip that he would plan. That's, that's fairly accurate because he used to book the one. He said, "Oh man, they only had one hotel room. We well, have to now, stay together." Do you He's want done to hear that multiple, the one multiple yeah. times? The by one the way. trip that I actually am considering is 
I want to go to the Philippines to visit Jay. And we've been talking about it. Oh. I think that would be really fun. Because well, his island, he said the fishing, surfing, and beaches right. are awesome. He says the food is crazy and it's tiny. Like I don't mean to keep knocking Jared, but I, I said this to a friend the other day. I said his Jeep is the perfect depiction of him as a person. From the outside, correct. it looks pretty damn good. Yeah, it's got nice, all these graphics. I always think of a cow when I see his it's car. It's not the camo is cow. Yeah. But yeah. then you get inside and the check engine light is on. It shakes. It's really loud. And the transmission okay. keeps going out. But instead of replacing the vehicle, he just spends lots of money on it looking fucking epic with the, the extra wheel, the off-road attire. I don't think that thing can go <laughs> did, off-road. Did you put an extra wheel on it? For a while, there was an extra wheel on yeah. it. Yeah. Where? On the top? On the back. It was on the top. Oh, the on top? the top. Yeah. Okay. It was in the basket. Because you look at it, you're like, man, that's like a $130,000 car. And then you get into it, and you're like, just kidding. This is in cars.com is $9,000. Right. <laughs> And that's four thousand dollars of wrap. That's kind of the way he runs his 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 rigging. You know what I mean? That's kind of the way he's set up right now. The the internal mechanism and machinery is, quite is possibly the is engine shaking. lights on. Yeah, the engine light is definitely on that thing. <laughs> Got the shakes. <laughs> the type of fuel you're running on is questionable. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's been sitting for a while. <laughs> you got to shake. The oil hasn't been changed, and who the heck knows? But I will say that there's one takeaway from your personality: is you live your life to the fullest, and yeah. it's your own individual actions and whatever the fallout from that is. That's okay. It's your life, but you live you live life, and that's something. I really I have cheap to... taste too. Cheap taste? Yeah. Like I, Unless like it's studio that... equipment. You're very expensive when you come to studio equipment. Not well, expensive. Well, but... yeah, because I I don't feel guilty buying anything that has to do with media creation. Yeah. Because I, I always see it as, okay, once I hit the buy button on that, I put myself in this, the next four things I make are going to have to justify this cost yeah and you're gonna pay it off within a month yeah and generally almost every time i can hit that mark in like two things yeah. oh and evan actually evan and i have a pretty big announcement for you two um we're pregnant. That you guys don't know um evan and i we're pregnant are winners of the content contest <laughs> oh, and yeah, we want the world yeah, to know yeah. that we yeah. beat you guys that's yeah. he called me uh, actually yesterday he goes do you want the good news i go y- you still won the contest yes i know you're still winning yep yeah and he goes yep Give him, just, just give him the good news and the good news. Like, Do you want the good news or the good news? And he's like, but I, I, your video I, was have, good. I have an objection, Logan, because I, when, when I watched the, did you watch the footage of them grading? No. Yeah. I okay. Didn't. I watched the footage of them grading and this is my fault. So I shot us in the dick. Um, they only thought the requirement was two of the lines, by the way. Right. They also didn't know that this that the the whole thing had to be something that that pushed the can the RTD. Ours did on multiple kind of. times. You just put it in there. There was some nice B roll, and Ours then Evans won, and the island was a RTD. Strategic ad that was drink Evan. One yeah. one person's interpretation of an ad is not necessarily everyone's interpretation. Yeah. So Call actions always important. Yeah, let's back up. So we did a content contest. Corridor Digital judged it, and they recently got the results back to us. The Jared, Logan, Rich team lost to Evan, Matt, and Eli. Shocking. Shocking. Shocking, even though Matt cheated when he was choosing teams. I it know what close. you did. It was close. Yeah. I, I know, know what, what you did. About. I know what you did. That's fine. That's fine. You can you, know, you can blame talent, success. or you can you know make your own ego excuses. Within the want. judging, they were very close. Like they were they were given pros to each team going into the like final that. decision. They, they de- it they, was close, right? They, but then I actually agree. Like Sam said it the best to me. He's like, if I had to live with one of these pieces of content yes. for the rest of my life, that's all I could watch. I would pick your guys' oh. too. Because I don't want to. I disagree. Also, I disagree a, with that. I disagree with that. You disagree with that? No, because ours was so good and so catchy that that it, you would you would have that song in your head all day, it all every day. day. Whereas but, I've had that song in my head for multiple hours. I'm sure you have too. Yeah. And just getting rid of that song is very, very difficult. It is a better. It, it's a, it's a much better piece of content. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, 
that tune is quite catchy. I'm just, but here's here's another big takeaway that they that they that we didn't brief them properly on the grading. They didn't know that it was open genre. They thought it was both comedy. So they judged us on ours being funny, and we weren't necessarily we weren't who, trying to be funny. Sorry, who who was running? Mm-hmm. The That's why I said this is my corridor. fault. This is my <laughs> fault. <laughs> this is the same. We lost thing. because yeah. I was a bad communicator. And right, you and, also and extended the time huh, limit, yes. and you also allowed them to use visual effects, which we originally said was a no go. Yep. Yeah, but they. Yep. The corridor guys did not even touch on visual effects in any of their grading. They didn't even. They didn't even. Well, if anything, them. for us, the VFX is probably a setback because if they're basing it off of that, they're such great, so good yeah, at VFX. They would have. Right. Eli did the he, lightning he, he, shot he, yeah. in twenty minutes, yeah. and then we just half-ass color graded it to pull contrast up. So we got no, knocked you didn't on color. color grade anything. We did. That wasn't raw footage. I was there on the color wheels. It so. looks gross. You guys shot an iPhones. Yeah, that so? looks good. Yeah, it looks good. It looks yeah, good. if you like colored. fucking, you know, Michael J. Fox holding your fucking yeah. iPhone. Because we've never phone. done anything successful on an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. You guys came out with a great piece of content. I'm not going to lie. I'm Thank excited you. for the audience to see both. Yes, and, yet, and yes, if I have to watch one forever, I'm going to watch yours because it's entertaining. It's funny. Yeah. It's funnier. And <laughs> I have been noticing all the shit that you hid in there. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, I've been I've watched it, you know, another thirty times. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I hit a few there. things you, in there. You've got to you got to watch Evan's hands in his videos because mm-hmm. he's he does a little. He's very fingery. Yeah. Yeah. Fingery. Yeah. Fingery. <laughs> I hide a lot of things. <laughs> I I will say this. <laughs> I my hide favorite a lot parts. Of things. My favorite parts of these videos. So when you watch them and you, you know, obviously we can, you know, as we release this, I'm not sure if that'll be out yet, but as you watch them, they're, they're really cool moments in this. Like Logan is smoking crack out of a, uh, out of a musket. <laughs> out, of, out of a flintlock musket. By, flintlock by far. Pistol. So, well, 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 fake crack. He didn't right. actually. Yeah, he was I mean, we, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, that's what <laughs> smoking crack out of a flintlock pistol. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty, that was a good scene. You and your face. by lightning. Your face was really good in that. The way that you popped your eyes. Yeah, I, lots of acting in there. Yeah. You're, you're you good. get struck by lightning. I'm I'm uh, two different girls in my video, of course. You play two. Well, the thing was females. the thing what you guys did, which I think was not a failure, but you guys are really we laughed at a lot more parts than they laughed at at yours because the undertone of the jokes were so specific to our comedy style internally, like the Richard bit about. Go to work, yeah, oh, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Evans. These are shocking. inside baseball That's fucking jokes. hilarious because how it much is. we beat on Richard about that stuff. Yeah. Like that to me was such that, a that good awesome. beat. But for them, they're like, okay, okay. he's just kind of mad at something. Yeah. They didn't right. get it. I there was a point where I was like, it. I liked what we did, but also if we didn't have the restrictions and I could have used Kate and other people for interviews and things like that, making that like a three minute thing would have would have been really funny to like actually sure. spend the time and write it out like but i think that's the part of why that those those contests will be fun and i hope that the audience likes it they is, bring bigger pieces well yeah and flash to bang 48 hours to put together a three and two minute skit that that that's that's editing in also i mean that's a lot of work i mean we put probably 14 hours of work total in the span of two days on that while having real jobs yeah so i went back and rewatched the when we were picking the teams that video segment and you were actually thinking about cross-dressing from the very beginning you brought it up during that decision making process and you I, knew I you wanted to include yourself in drag well right i figured how that. do you incorporate comedically other characters I, you got either you got to dress, and then me as a girl, and then especially when you hit Evans Island, his idea Gilligan's Island. I was like, okay, I have that makes an idea. Sense. What? What if the next one we do, it's me and Evan versus the rest of you? <laughs> I mean, you'll <laughs> lose, but okay, sure. Well, but that's that's basically what it would be if it was if the team was Richard, you, and me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be basically when we find that team, which we will eventually. That'll be what it is. We kind of hold all of us to a standard where it's like, you know, the, the, the narcissistic dad where your son scores a soccer goal and you're like, oh, man, I would have scored two at your age. Yeah, We're really rude to each other. Your age. It's hyper competitive. I, but I don't I, – I think that's, that's, that's acceptable because you're a team, right? So if you're a team of people, 
this team has never, I don't think we've ever been in these environments where everybody's encouraging one another through uh, that would feel really, really, like a really good yeah, try. It's it, feel, like, it would feel gross, right? It'd feel a little bit gross where you're like, you caught me hey. off guard the other day when you were like, man, Fox News, you did, you did a pretty good interview, man. And I was like, did Evan just give me a comp? It like felt weird because normally it's like, mm. oh, we could have done better. I could have done these talking points and, but it was good well, thank you. It was just yeah. weird because I'm not used to positive reinforcement from anybody on this. I don't like it. It's weird. Yeah. It, it's the whole mentality of why I don't do CrossFit when they're like, come on, Matt, one more lift. And I'm like, Stop. if you say that again, I'm just going to drop the weight because I'm self-motivated. I, I got it in here. <laughs> right. It's in my soul. Yeah. It, it's, it's almost, it almost counteracts when people are positive and going like, you did a great job. Good yeah, job. It's suspicious. You know, you're like, oh, oh, what are you, you hey, nice what's your me. objective? What's your, yeah. what's, what your you getting at what's your angle? What's your angle, pal? Yeah. What are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, what is this? this? What is this? What are yeah. you doing here? Yeah, exactly. Well, especially with us, I think I've learned to like do that to other people because a lot of people, I'd say venture 85% of people like positive reinforcement where we, we really do well with negative reinforcement. I think, I think a lot of it comes from the community that you come from and you're kind of raised in. Well, yeah, it's like being back in the teams, you're on in the range and you're like, ha, ah, nice shot group. What about that stupid fucking flyer outside of the A box, mm-hmm. you pussy idiot? And you're like, yeah, okay, yeah. I better go train for the next four hours. Yeah. Not like, great, you got almost of all of them in. Man, think about, think about if you're, if, if you're, team leader when you showed up to battalion mm-hmm. just did nothing but like positive praise you praise like really good try man I, I pulled your no, record of rasp you did wow. i heard you were a stud man yeah you think no. he's trying to fuck you like, no that's hey buddy no. it's time to get up we gotta do pt yeah yeah <laughs> wakey 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 shake and bakey let's Maddie. all run together across the finish line hey matt what? you looked really tired because you were out late last night getting fucking destroyed with your friends yeah so i just let you sleep in just, yeah no pt Don't in the worry, morning I told <laughs> like, oh you're hungover you're, you're running another dental. five miles Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no you had that guy like all of us did i'm sure we can all recall it was like i am going to run you until i'm going to try to get you to puke your asshole out that's what i'm going to try to get you to do i'm going to run you and pt you to the point of which i want to see your sphincter fly out of your your face well you know that used to be part of ranger community i doubt they can do this anymore because it'd be considered hazing but before you go to ranger school the night before you leave in battalion they make you drink beers and it, as long as it takes they smoke the piss out of you until you vomit and it's you and your ranger buddy and you have to vomit and you can't forcefully vomit yourself. And so they just smoke. I think we got smoked for like two and a half, three hours until we, we both threw up. It's a good one, though. And then my teammate, Trey, who's amazing, threw up and picked up the shrimp that he threw up and ate it off yeah. the wow, off the, off the, 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 the bathroom what? floor in Ranger Barracks. You were so on like, Fox News mm, this solid. week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, something worked. No, no. I, I, I love it. I think that's part of like the victim culture, and then the fact that you can't be tough on people. I think when you know where the bottom is, it's pretty easy to exist in the middle, or at least a little off the, the floor. So I, I absolutely love it. I love being competitive, and I love I love that. I hate the whole participation trophy stuff, and I think it really creates a, a positive competitive dynamics in business. Um, at least with the partners and owners, because it's like we're always trying to outdo each other, and that's that's a really really good thing. <laughs> no one's like, oh, it's okay, you didn't work for two weeks. I'm sure you were a little tired. And it's like, no, tired. we've all gone through like really shitty stuff, and she'll show up to work. Oh yeah, because you're not going to remember like, oh that that boss was like casually nice to me. That was that was. You're not going to remember no. that. That doesn't do anything for you for life experience. But the worst times in life make the best stories. Like when you go to a bar, you don't talk about how. You know, nice. You're, you're relaxing someone, by yeah, the you're like, dude. This one time I broke my hand in a fist fight, or this one time I fucking this or that. Like, you know, I don't think a lot of people tell war stories in bars about how they hit a dry hole. They tell the crazy ones, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, the chief instructor at Scout Sniper School that would call his five year old daughter to berate you oh. on no sleep. You know, oh. it's you know, if you're talking shit to me, that's one that's thing. Good, but when right? you've got this five year old little girl, that's like. My, uh, you, you're you're worthless. You're worthless. <laughs> my commandant, little girl is telling you that. <laughs> One of my, that's amazing. The right? commandant, when I was an instructor, one of the, my favorite tac P's, and he, tremendous respect for this guy. But he, he had this kid quit, and he called that kid's dad on the PT field. Hannah, he's like, "Hey, sir, this is uh, the commandant of the schoolhouse. Just uh, 
didn't think that you raised a quitter just from... Uh, oh, my God. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put him on the phone. <laughs> he's trying to quit right now. Hands the kid the phone, and he's just, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he takes the phone. He's like, all right, thanks. He's like, so you still want to quit? He's like, no. He's like, all right, get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, great. I think any time in life, that's a great thing. Like, for me, I remember my oldest brother told me, he's like, yeah, good luck, but I severely doubt you'll ever become a ranger. You're too much of a pussy. And I was like, wow. And any, I never really thought about quitting, but it was that was always in the back of my head. Like, I'm going to have to stand in front of my father yeah. and my brothers for the rest of of my motherfucking life and say that I yeah. voluntarily quit. I yeah, get the yeah. guys that hurt themselves or something like that, unfortunate circumstances. And, and I'm not discrediting anybody that said this is not the path they want to take. But for me to know that I was going to have to stand in front of my father and my brothers and go, I quit. I, I'm, I'm incapable of doing that. I would rather mm-hmm. fucking die. And the, the the capstone of that was his ability to to just no emotion, but say something that just like resonated respect. The kid, you know, as they were leaving, he turns around. He's like, oh, "I'm sorry, sorry." He goes, "Don't worry about it. Sometimes you just need a reminder." And it's like <laughs> that stuck with that kid for the rest Good of his leadership. life. <laughs> well, that's that's a way bigger motivator for me. Like, tell me I can't do yeah, something. Say and no. Like, I, <laughs> like nothing makes me want to do something more. That's the number one reason why I graduated. You could never give me a blowjob. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting question for everybody here. Is there ever been a, a, a moment in your life where whatever it was, military or something, where you were insanely close to just quitting because you, you couldn't handle it? Every day. I should never even made it through tech B school. Are you kidding? Look at me. <laughs> no, but like, did you internally go like, I, I'm, I'm out? I kept saying I'll quit tomorrow. Really? And then eventually I just graduated. So you putting things off actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Procrastinating. Yeah, procrastination. I can only put some success in Jared's life. <laughs> well, it's just like, man, this this is this sucks. This is really shitty. This is awful. I'd be like, well, I'll just quit tomorrow. And then, but, but it would give me, it's like, well, this is yeah. this is my last day. So I mean, it's fucking last day. I could I could I could push through this. <laughs> I think for mine, the only time where I was like questioning was actually in RIP. I, when I got out of airborne school, um, they, you know, they smoked the piss out of us, had like 30 people quit that first day. Not a problem. But then best ranger competition happened and I was in RIP holdover for, I believe, oh. six weeks and I raked rocks for 12 hours a day. Oh. Right? 12 hours a day, I sat there and raked rocks and I called Solid. my dad and I was like, bro, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I just want to get to a unit deploying. He's like, yeah, just trust me. You want to stay with this. It was like probably an hour where I'm yeah. like, this sucks. And then second selection started. I was like, all day. You know, this is easy. But raking rocks for six weeks is pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. That's a Marine Corps move right there. Yeah. Painting yeah. rocks, raking rocks. We're good at that. We yeah. do that a lot. Crayons. The Have you guys seen all this UFO footage coming Boo! out? Well, I, I, I wanted to hear Logan's. Oh, sorry. I, I yeah. wanted to hear yeah. Logan's. What have you have you, have you been thinking about quitting here? Just black rifle mostly. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about quitting the company? I think I've thought about it before, mm-hmm. yeah, but you know, not past like. Yeah, have you ever tried to work for you two to do that? For fuck's sake! Hey, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever tried to work with or yeah. for you two? I can imagine. We're I can not imagine. that bad. <laughs> Even though it did come to our attention, apparently that we uh, we are uh, we monopolize things, and if it's not our way, we don't let it happen. I've, I've heard. Is this is this is this? Is oh this no, my, no! I, I think would... you have to do that as a leader, like because people have a tendency to get all their shit in a wad and in a bunch, and somebody's got to step in, and be like, nope, this is the way we're doing it. Yeah, you gotta kill. It. You gotta kill your kids, man. Like, I mean, and that's a bad analogy, but uh, I, I do like saying that in the sense of like, somebody has to be the bad guy, like, and somebody has to own the brand, right? But that's a totally different side. That's a totally different side conversation. I, I want to know where in your life you're you're thinking of quitting. Um, the only thing I've ever thought about quitting was school. Yeah, the military was great. Like yeah. I, my entire experience yeah. in the military, I was like, this is exactly what I signed up for. This mm-hmm. is great. I love a little bit of suffering. Like literally one of our mottos in Scout Sniper Platoons is suffer patiently, patiently suffer. Like right. when that's your motto, right? Fair. What, what's going to bring you down? That stuff was just fun to me. Looking back, like there was never any selection that I was like, oh, I don't know. I got to check out of this. It was, that was the fun stuff for me. 
Right. School sucked for me. Yeah. I, I wasn't a big. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, that's the number one reason why I graduated college is because when I was switching battalions, this Marine counselor was like, there's no way you're ever going to get a degree. And I was like, dude, you don't, you don't even know me. <laughs> you don't tell me I, I can't get a degree like right. that's paid for by the government. Yeah. And so like when I was getting rough you, on that, that a was a bachelor's this, in film or would you, like, uh, or bachelor's in professional writing is what the degree is, but it was basically a modern communications degree. It's basically the only one here without a bachelor's degree. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. yet. I'm still sitting on the same playing field. Weird. I, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, you're you're going to have to unpack that for me for a minute. Professional communications. What what does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, it was professional writing. So professional it was, writing. Essentially, sorry. it was a it was a digital media communications degree, right? Mm-hmm. So it had evolved from what was originally just a writing mm-hmm. vertical My to something that was just communication based technology. through current technology. Yeah. So it's calm. Yeah. It, which, you know... It was basically everything that I'm doing now. Like right. Everything that I learned in college is exactly what I've been doing over the course of the last five years here. Hmm. That's, a, that's pretty that's cool. rare. Yeah. I didn't realize that you would actually uh, – you're applying I, – I, I thought for some reason, I don't know why, that you had gotten a different degree. I thought it was in film for some reason and then – That's what I thought. That, so we had we had a totally misinterpretation. How long have we known each other for fucking six years, and we just found this <laughs> out? <laughs> well, I don't know what your guys' degrees are in either. Mine is in the most general studies of all time. I started in uh, business management, and then I changed to healthcare administration because I wanted to like potentially do like Lean Six Sigma and like go into hospitals and manage the like information and business side of it. And I really my minor was in um, oh god, what was it? Electronic healthcare records. Yeah. So it was the whole aspect of creating, hmm. helping the digital database of healthcare records instead of having on paper. Because when, I'm sure all of us know when I transitioned out of the military, it was like, oh, you got to have those mailed here. And then they lose them. They're like, sorry, got to shoot you nine more times with a needle. And you're like, I got right. my penicillin and all these vaccinations. Right. And yeah. I, I really wanted to do that. And then as I started getting into more creative stuff, I realized I'm just going to get a bachelor's degree for the sake of it. So I got a liberal. It's literally a bachelor's in liberal arts. You cannot have a more general degree. But... It was super easy, honestly. I did it for my mom. Really? Yeah, because I was the first one in my my family to get a bachelor's Mm -hmm. degree, and I knocked it out in three years. It's kind of like a whatever. Right. I was a poli-sci guy, so, I mean, I have nothing. I have literally a worthless, like it's worthless. So I don't think I, my takeaway from college, at least I didn't, it, it was subjected to information that I necessarily wouldn't have had prior to it. But for me, probably similar to you was the writing aspect of it. It was very intensive of every four weeks I was writing, you know, a, a 10 to 12 page paper on something. And the cool part about that, like my capstone project was on, um, gun control, um, surprisingly got an A with a very liberal professor, but <clears throat> for that, it was nice, like developing an idea, carrying it through, which definitely helped with like my book and, you know, writing scripts and that kind of stuff, like developing ideas yeah. is a lot that I got. Out of that. Other than that, it was pretty worthless. But you went to University of Washington, right? Well, not the whole time. Oh, I transferred okay. out there for a short time. Then I came back. I was like, that's a pretty big school. Yeah. I mean, it was a big school. It was also a really shitty school to go to. It was a fucking horrible experience. Really? Yeah. It was a horrible experience. Why? I worked... I worked nights at UPS. I was an ROTC, so I'd get up in the morning and do PT with, you know, three, four days a week with ROTC, which is standard, you know, zero six formation time every day. And so I was working at night and getting up in the morning and fucking doing Kadidiot bullshit. And it, uh, and I didn't, I, I just, I wasn't a, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not geared for that type of an environment for extended periods of time. That's not, that's not, that's not where I find like homeostasis. That's like, you know, if you, when you have a confined subject that you have to take for extended periods of time and you have to go to the same classroom, you have to do the same thing. It's like, Hey man, can I just like get this done? Can we just fucking yeah, yeah. get this thing over with? Yeah. Like let's. Fast forward to the end. Can I can I like take the test and yeah, get through the this? Like, let's, and let's just let's just yeah. fucking get 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 this thing over with. So I f- I found it frustrating, and that's one of the things that I would probably say that I learned between you know eighteen and twenty two was that 
exercising a certain amount of patience throughout that. And it was really frustrating because I'm a really, I, I, it's, I'm a very impatient person. Uh, it was very, it was very challenging for a lot of different reasons. It was financially challenging. It was working a combination of jobs. Were you a delivery guy for UPS? No, I was sorting packages at night. Mm. So you ha- you would sit on this, um, conveyor belt and you would look at the zip code and then you had all the zip codes for at, in, in Seattle, you know, you've got, I don't know, we'll, we'll call it 30 different zip codes. And then you'd have five different shoots. So you'd have to memorize the zip codes for the each one of those shoots, and then you'd be throwing packages down the shoots that were in those zip codes. Got it. So, so they hit the right trucks. Yeah. So they go to the right trucks. Wow. So they'd be packed on the trucks and then shipped. That out. is such a just the the to to understand how the shipping and and just the U.S. Postal Service is is effective is is mind boggling. Like. <laughs> well, I, and I would say that it was actually, it was, it was a good job for about a month because when you're trying to learn that many fucking zip codes and you're like learning zip codes and fucking throwing packages, you're like, oh, that's cool. And then after a while, it just becomes so repetitive that it's mind numbing. So I quit that job because I wanted to ride my motorcycle down the Baja Peninsula. Mm. <laughs> and so yeah. I took my XR200 for like spring break and i packed my backpack and uh rode my shitty old this shitty old xr 200 on the baja <laughs> peninsula and what year was it 85 84 yeah fuck off what no what year was the xr oh, oh okay got yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was, like, or, was it an orange yeah, one no no it was it was an 80s it wasn't a 90s xr yeah so it was an orange one so i packed like blue seat what uh, yeah exactly white yeah, blue seats i, or I had whatever xr 100 85 and um and that was a great trip. Totally worth quitting the job, by the way, because it was like whatever. I mean, I've quit a few different jobs, so I've quit jobs before because they're just well, me too. they're just yeah, dumb yeah. jobs, right? It's like, and the the way that I the reason I typically quit was like I wanted to do something that was way more epic in my life, and you know, I when I, I quit the agency, even though the agency thinks they fired me, but that's a totally different story. <laughs> um, you know, I quit because. You know, I wanted to do something else with my life, right? But that was a very significant psychological struggle for quite a while, even before that. It was like, you know, am I quitting? Am I, you know, like you're going through this entire right. process of like you got your identity wrapped into this, you know, three letter acronym and where I was at the time in my life. And I had, you know, a new kid and you're looking at all these people and you don't want to disappoint your peers. You don't want to look bad, you know. Um, but, I don't think I've ever wanted to quit something more than leave that the agency. Like I was miserable. And it wasn't the guys. The guys were super fun to work with, right? It was it was incredible. Every time I've had a really significant psychological struggle where I've wanted to leave, it's been with a a personality conflict. It's mm. been a hundred percent And then managing been, you maybe or correct. Yeah. Yeah, I've had I've had great managers where I'm like, not a problem. I'll work. Yeah. I would work for that guy any day of the week, anywhere. You know, typically there's a very per, there's a very specific person in that. But every time when I think back, even uh, at, at Fort Bragg and SF, the only time I wanted to quit was there was a guy in our class that. Everybody, we signed a petition to try to get him removed because he was passing academics and he was passing the course, but they wouldn't remove him for peer reviews and it, and it pissed all of us off. Like we were all pissed off. Every one of the 18 echoes, which is a communication sergeant and special forces, every one of us signed a petition to get this guy removed from the course. He was a, he was a fucking asshole. And the formation I was in, I remember exactly what I was thinking. I remember the the the, the moment so well. This was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mars was his name. I remember the guy. And he was the SWIC commander. So he was in charge of uh, essentially selection and the training for special forces. And he kept us in formation at parade rest at Fort Bragg for, I don't know, two hours in the sun before he even showed up. So we were at parade rest, solid. solid. Then he showed up, didn't didn't at ease us, and then berated the entire class. Where he's like, you, the 
the military is not a democracy. And he gave us this entire speech where he was talking about when I showed up to SF, it was full of a bunch of fucking ragtag shit bags and guys from Vietnam. And you guys think that you know better than me. And, um, so he was just berating the entire formation. He's like, does anybody have any questions? There was one guy that had a question. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I raised my hand. He was like, who in the fuck are you? <laughs> you know? And I was like, hey, I'm Steph Sergeant Hafer, I've got a question. So why do you even do peer reviews then if they don't, if, if they're not submitted and if they aren't, if they aren't geared to work, why do we even do them? And that was my question. Like that was a legitimate question, which right. I was, I was, I still feel today that that was a legitimate question that, that should be question. that yeah. should be answered, yeah. right? So why even do them if we're if we're not going to review our peers and remove people that we don't get along with and we don't think will be value add to the community? Well, why? And I think his head might have detached from his body. <laughs> <laughs> What was he was was there a was there like a snicker amongst the formation? No, like no, a, no, no, no. Oh, shit! I, like, I, I remember uh, very, very prominently the when when we were dismissed after he had spent ten minutes berating me about how I was be going to be nothing in my life and fucking blah blah blah. And I was like, hmm. I'll just go join the navy. I was I was literally in my head. I was like, I don't give a shit. Before I asked that question, I was like, I don't give a shit. I'll go join the navy. Like, literally, I was like, I'll fucking go join the Navy tomorrow. I don't care. Like, <laughs> fuck this. Yeah. And when we were dismissed and we were walking out of formation, uh, one of my friends, like, walked up beside me and was like, dude, you are either the dumbest fucking guy I have ever met or you should be carting your balls around in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, I like to think that I'm the latter, but... Uh, yeah, that was the only time. Literally. So, did he acknowledge your question at all? Did he no. respond to it? At- no, he didn't. He didn't acknowledge my question. He didn't answer it, which is actually a really good example of a bad leader. Yes. Right? These are yes. all examples of a bad leader. These are all examples of guys that that if he would have he showed started up- his conversation trying to essentially talk all of you out of your Correct. opinion. Frame one. That's never that's never going to work, which, and that's not leadership at all. No, it, well, f- f- frame of reference one, which is you don't keep your guys in parade rest. They didn't do any. We didn't do anything wrong. We we reviewed a peer and we submitted a a, a legitimate one page document, which was these which the you were why. asked to do, <laughs> and but I got my revenge because I went to Seer school with that guy. So mm. in order for him to be in charge of Seer. He had to actually go to Seer, and he hadn't been to Seer. He was one of the dumbest fucking guys I have ever been around. When you go to Seer, for instance, I hope this isn't too far down the rabbit hole. No, I love this. Okay, send it. But when you go to Seer, there's a thing that you have to do. It's it's you got to play the game, right? You got to play the game. And so when you get into your interrogation camp, everybody knows that. You're not supposed to do certain things. You're like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm not like that strong. I'm so weak. And you got to pretend, right? You got to play the game. You got to yeah. play it up. And those guys destroyed him because he did not know how to play the game. He didn't comprehend any of the lessons learned through all the classes. The guy was really out to lunch. He was <laughs> like out to lunch, out to lunch. And it was funny because for me, I got to see my revenge unfold. Ultimately I get to see my revenge unfold, which is here's a guy that is obviously not very bright (laughs) and he doesn't know how to retain information. He doesn't know how to play the game. And then at that point, when I saw him just getting the shit slapped out of him at camp slappy in front of everybody. And there was a point where his, uh, his pants had fallen down around his ankles because you're wearing these, like, <laughs> these, these uh, hospital garments. You remember? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Here. So you're wearing basically hospital scrubs. That's what you're wearing. And you don't have any boot laces and you're walking around. You're like just wearing these like really loose-fitting, ill-fitting garments. But his pants are around his ankles and he's just getting slapped in front of everybody <laughs> multiple times. And... I was just could not have been happier at that point in my life. I was like, oh man, 
This is so sweet. It wasn't as if I had anything to do with it. It was just something that I was like, oh, okay. Is Hooray. this the same seer class with the blueberry story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, That's same story. That's a good one. That's, That's a good, good one, tale. yeah. I, I like to think of myself as a comedian in very low times, you know, when things are really dark and really yeah, bad. Yeah, that's when you I really like to shine. think where I shine. That's where I that's really what, that's, flourish that's my why comedic we get along. activity. <laughs> 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 Humor through horror, man. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. when shit's real dark, I'm like, I'm just going to pop off a joke and see what fucking happens. <laughs> Someone's about to break. Let's see if we can help them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let us begin. No, that's mm. a great... I said that in, in the book to you, but... I always, I realized that early on was a lot of the guys I went to rip with that were super serious that would actually I had one guy in in my mind that he like berated me one day cuz he was like you think this is a fucking joke you think this is this and that and I'm like listen I'm out shooting out like physical fitness like I'm doing the job but when we're you know at Cole range running back and forth for hours upon hours. I'm going to make some motherfucking jokes when I'm running yeah. off of one hour sleep, cold as shit and tired because it's funny and it gets your mind off. It's why I used to sing songs like Britney Spears when I was fucking ruck marching. Cause I thought it was hilarious and I wasn't thinking about how bad my feet hurt. I was like, so tell me what you want, what you want, really <laughs> you know, like yeah. this shit's funny. It's like, take it serious. I remember it was like the third day of Cole range or whatever it was. And that dude, they were like, hit the fucking wood line. And he stood there, which means he quits. And I was like, that oh, shit's funny, dude. <laughs> that's super like, funny. I I had a uh, going through school. I had a five fifty cord piece of five fifty cord with the TACP crest on it that I just wore. Like, if I fucking wanted to fucking get out of there, I'd look at it. Okay, this is why I'm here, kind of thing. And one of the cross trainees who was a prior service person that's now trying to go out for TACP saw when we we were like doing push ups, taking our blouse off. He saw it. And he starts yelling at me, and he rips it off and throws it in the woods and says that it's stupid. <laughs> And then he failed like four days later. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I was just like, because <laughs> they're taking every moment seriously. You have to look at the psychological yeah. impact of making every small thing matter so much. Where it's like that stuff doesn't matter. Like, find your own personal motivation, the reason you're there, and the reason to stay. Yeah, it's like, and what's the point of you yelling at me right now, dude? We're all students right now. Like, okay, right? You can either you shouldn't yeah. have this. You could be on an 18 mile ruck march and think about how much it sucks, or you could think about why you're there and try to lighten the situation I, I think that's a great psychological or mental exercise well i think that's been proven throughout history as well it, it, it it's interesting i was listening to this thing on um on shackleton so he was the expeditionary leader for the he he he, he was an infamous trip actually to antarctica and it was on um i don't know it was on some podcast and they were talking about how he was selecting for this trip and he'd already made two failed trips to Antarctica. And so he knew what he wanted to see within a team when they, when they went to Antarctica and his selection criteria was really interesting. And it sounds somewhat familiar because he was more concerned with, yes, the person had to have skill, but he was more concerned with the type of personality and what that personality would do when things got really rough because he knew yeah. where they were going. They were going to be cold, obviously. It's Antarctica, right? They were yeah. going to be fucking miserable. And the chances of them even surviving were, were relatively low. So you're going to spend a significant amount of time in cold and darkness in the most miserable conditions. So his selection criteria is he would bring people in and the job announcement for this was, you know, looking for, you know, men of adventure for, you know, high risk profession, chances of you coming back are almost zero, but <laughs> the chances of you, you know, receiving reward and praise are high, something like that. Right. It, it, that that's the summary statement of it. But when he was interviewing people, he would ask them specific things. He would say, okay, well, that's great. I, I see that you're, you know, you're a biologist and you're a doctor. Um, so tell me a joke. Let me see how funny you are. Or he'd ask guys, he'd be like, what's your favorite song? And they would, ask, they would answer. And he would say, great, sing it for me. I want to see how well you can sing. Here, I got a guitar. You want to play your guitar? So he was making these selection criteria around not only the skill sets that a person has, but also what he felt their personality would be when things got really fucking rough. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people probably know the end of this story is this is probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous expedition 
which they never got to Antarctica, actually. They spent almost two years floating on ice outside of the continent. They didn't get there. Their ship was locked in the ice. It broke into pieces. They were living in tents outside of their ship, watching their ship basically being dismantled. They were hunting and killing seals for food. And then eventually they loaded up into their survival their, their survival rafts and navigated by stars and a sextant back to a very remote whaling position where they had to hike up and over a mountain range with basically zero mountaineering gear, but they required it. And he brought every one of his men back. Brought every one of his men back. That's dope. Two years being lost essentially at sea, not lost, but I mean, they were trapped in ice, living out of tents, then moving across this, you know, the dark Antarctic waters of just like icebergs and nastiness, living off fucking seal blubber. And they, they had nothing and they were essentially emaciated and, you know, cold and wet all the fucking time. They were in threat of being killed at, at any point in time from the water, from the ice, brought every one of them back. And I think when we look at even the, the past, circumstances we've all had how important it is to have that guy that's actually really fucking funny that brings levity to any situation i would actually say that's one of the testaments to our team not to like break my arm to pat my myself and everybody else here on the back but we work a lot we work a fucking painstakingly difficult job and when i say that it's not like hunting people that's not that's not the that's not the point it's we we work a lot business has it's like really high highs and it's fucking really low lows but the main, the main consistent theme i think for the last 6 years is how often have we argued yeah i think you should make light of the situation i, I yeah I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that. Yeah, Which is the I want to know. I, yeah, I want to dig into this Antarctica thing now. This sounds super interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the 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 name of probably I think the most the most famous the, the the book that was written about it was called Endurance. I actually have the job posting quote on uh, my my wall in uh, in Salt Lake, but it's a it's an incredible story. I read the book probably when I was in my twenties at some point in time. I reread it recently. It, it's so applicable and such a demonstration of leadership in a way that, like, that guy had a fucking end state. It was everybody's going to live. And they beat the odds, like, overwhelming odds to bring every one of his people back. Oh, my God, man. It's almost unheard of. Not only that, but, I mean, the, the chances of mutiny in circumstances yeah. like that. Yeah. The chances of, you know, somebody going fucking crazy and killing somebody else. Like, yeah. these guys were isolated and this was right actually they launched their boat uh they launched their ship the i think the day after world war one started so nobody gave a fuck if these guys ever came back oh, <laughs> like they oh had, yeah there's they nobody had, to come like, get nobody you. gave a shit and i think it was actually winston churchill that gave the final approval because they had to take a ship from the fleet and uh it wasn't winston churchill because that was the that was Two. the Second World War, yeah. but it was he might have actually been part Department of the Navy at that time. And um, but the funny thing is, is when you look at everything involved in that, there are so many leadership lessons just within two years, and it's such a famous circumstance. And they didn't succeed, right? They didn't even succeed in their <laughs> adventure. Yeah, I mean that kind of goes back to the podcast we're talking about positivity. I think that's a big component of leadership is just like a, a positive spirit through the worst times. And I think you see a lot more selection criteria involving mm-hmm. psych boards. Yeah, and, you know some of the best units in the world and our nation. Um, there's a pretty drastic psych board as far as like how's your how do you live your life outside of the profession because all of that mentality will be applied in the worst situations. And I think a lot of people discredit how much your, your brain and psychology is involved in your performance because you can shoot well, you can run fast, but what about when none of that matters? <laughs> are you an asshole? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. You My... can shoot fast. You can run fast, but are, are, are you an asshole? And do we even yeah. want to spend, I, you, you now have me wondering what seal tastes like seal. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't think I... I've ever had seal. No, no, but 
They they ate their seals. They, they had dogs. They ate their dogs. They, I mean, this is like a really shitty situation. But I would highly recommend the book if Damn. you guys are still in quarantine and you need some good reading material. It's a, it's a fantastic What's book. What's the name again? Endurance. Endurance. It's the Shackleton Expedition. It's amazing. The Shackleton It's an amazing Expedition. book. And there's so much that's been written on it. There are like leadership studies and all kinds of crazy ass shit that accompanies that thing. It, it's an it's a, it's a epic tale of adventure. I dig it. That was a rabbit hole, but I liked it. Dude, that was a that was an Dang, intense yeah. rabbit hole, yeah. right? Uh, so my, I, I, my previous question we, we dodged over, but the, the UFO stuff, have you guys seen oh. some of the DOD yeah, release? Yeah, which it's like so much is going on in the news right now. It's like they're trying to just, boo, here yeah, it is. Yeah. There you go. The government released video of UFOs. And like, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's UFOs. So, like, UFO, I think, is synonymous with aliens, right? But UFO stands for unidentified flying object. Do you think that this is human shit or is okay. this extraterrestrial? So, so, well, bring this back and let, let, let's go extraterrestrial down this for a minute. Think about this is if we were able today, like, let's just, let's just pretend we see, you know, Titan for the, the moon on Saturn that possibly could have an atmosphere. We know that there's civilization on there. And now we have a craft that can get there. What would we do? Are we just going to roll into some civilization and land and be like, hey, what up? Uh, so what's this place about? Like, no, you got to do surveillance I think first. Some yeah, ad if bond, anything's out coming here, going. they're drones. These are alien drones. Oh, that's a, they're that, checking yeah. shit out. They're sending back information. That's a good hypothesis. Yeah. Space yeah. reconnaissance. Because because I'm just saying, put us in in yeah. their shoes. We're able to get to a, another planet that's a civilization. What are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Like, you have we're no not idea. just fucking. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea what what the life form is necessarily, or how they'll react to you showing up. I mean, and then imagine and and, and imagine what this would do to the globe too. If other countries were able to get there and these were maybe a primitive species, but they had nice resources and stuff like that, it's going to start a war back here because some one country is going to roll over there and start just mopping the floor with them and trying to take it. And we're going to be like, hey, stop doing that. That's that's you're being a piece of shit. And now like now a, we're fighting a proxy space war. <laughs> yeah. dude. Whoa. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that you could unpack by just going, OK, what happens if right now we know there's a planet with civilizations on it and we can get there? Yeah, I was actually thinking about this yesterday because I was driving by the cows and I was I was driving by the cows of the ranch and I was thinking those cows have been bred for stupidity, like for over, I mean, as we've been an agrarian society, we'll just call it the cow has been around for several thousand years and we've been breeding it for stupidity and fatness. Right. And then I thought, I wonder if we will become the aliens cow, you know, yeah. like maybe, maybe they'll just breed us for stupidity obesity and, and stupidity. And then I was, and then my, my, my afterthought of that was like, Oh, what's happening in the United States right now? There's an obesity epidemic <laughs> and an IQ epidemic, essentially. Dude, throw, interesting what, shit. Let's yeah. throw on our tin hats and go down that fucking rabbit hole. <laughs> it's almost like uh, yes. idiocracy a little right. bit in a sense where it's like conditioned people to just exist and then get fat. And then that's something a lot in alien movies. They want our natural resources, but very seldomly other do than maybe the us. matrix do they want use humans as power and if you look at it from a biological function we are the biggest species on the planet where are we at now like fucking nearly nine billion people or something it's good it's, yeah. good. it's getting up. high it's getting yeah. up there and that's yeah. a lot of energy you it's know a lot of energy it's a lot of energy because yeah. what what other you're a cinephile like so are you what other movies are out there than like the matrix where they use you know humans is energy very seldomly do you see no. that they want to wipe the human species and then harvest the natural resources on the planet yeah, independence day they they want the earth's core yeah it's mostly it's mostly shit yeah and we were, we were talking about the alien series a couple episodes ago but that was one of the big theories is that we are just an offshoot of their biology that they right. wanted to develop much the way they developed the xenomorph like it was just an evolution experiment for them to see or what I, i've heard that theory actually that's a really good theory because then we can go into there's there's this whole theory that aliens have already been here and there's right. this conspiracy theory that aliens came here they uh, did some type of DNA interference. They've they, they they which was the advancement from ape to 
homo sapien essentially that jump Mm -hmm. so what they're what the alien conspiracy theories guys say is there was a rewrite of dna that uh Babylon was the birthplace of civilization because that's where they actually conducted the experiment. There, you know, these these were a, a, an alien species that were like giants that essentially were the, the 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 masters of the earth. That's where like David and Goliath and some of these other like giant stories have come Greek from. There's, yeah. there's this this thread of interesting conspiracy theories involving. Aliens have already been here. They ran their DNA sequence. They they essentially were using us as a slave race to harvest gold because they wanted it for some of the... There's like a million different threads right. that come off of that thing. Yeah, but uh, also, what, what, about, what, about the, what about a theory that's just, let's say these guys, they created, they came, they invented us. And they're like, well, you know, they have the ability to to invent shit let's put them over on that planet and see what they come up with in the next few thousand years maybe it'll be cool and then we could take it <laughs> maybe that's what the ufo is it's it's a, it's a recon drone essentially yeah. seeing where we're at or right. maybe yeah, it's just like a hey, decade on based a, thing to be like oh like, wow they're oh, repopulating about, they came you, up with these things that can kill all of them they yeah, created like, a weapon that would destroy all of them Adams, man we didn't even think of man, that man you gave Fuck, them the extra stupid <laughs> juice guys yeah. said, don't give them the, 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 the let's just kill each other all the time and make something that wipes the whole planet away yeah our species did that two million years ago these peasants yeah these, yeah. yeah well i i think that's probably a good point to, to point out which is if there are alien if there's alien technology visiting earth they are so much more advanced than the human race. Yes. Well, it has to be based off of the the location. I mean, we can see pretty far as far as we can gauge time as humanity, but we we can maybe identify a couple planets that might have atmosphere and be able to sustain some form of biological life. But getting there is Impossible. way out of our yeah. reach at this point. So you're you're completely right in that sentiment, saying that the technology that whatever if there were, were actual aliens, like it's far far like thousands upon thousands of years more advanced than ours and then who knows what natural resources they have comparatively to what's available on earth well i i think that's a good point which is if you're an alien race coming to earth like, we'll, we'll, when we look at the entire solar system itself just our solar system we don't have to look at the universe we'll just say okay in the milky way galaxy if Earth is really what they're interested in. They're not interested in 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 the in the the, the minerals. Yeah, because, because you can get that anywhere. You can get that if anywhere. You can travel We're, anywhere in the fucking galaxy. They, they can get that next door. Right. You, you they, can get they, better they, shit on yeah, asteroids it, and on obtainium. Exactly. And all so it's like they're they're not interested in they're not interested in this. They would be interested in the atmosphere itself, like the atmosphere, yeah. because obviously something has gone. If they're interested in anything, they would just either be curious as to what the fuck is going on and they just want to know what what the fuck is going on on earth whoa shit those guys are crazy man yeah well, i watched one hour or of cnn if they, what were, the if they were if, if they were like wanting something it would be we want the atmosphere we want the earth and oh by the way we're not gonna fucking blow it up i want to go a way different perspective on that what if we were what was that movie with uh Jim Carrey where we 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 he was born into a reality TV show Oh yeah yeah uh, what the, what the if, Truman, if they, Truman show, they, yeah. it's Truman show. what if the planet is a large scale Truman show where right. the aliens are like Let's just see what happens when we make these apes really like kind of smart, and they're today on Alien News. Yeah, like, this is they're launching bombs at each other. I said this like <laughs> this was my theory on religion, you know, because kind of grasping this whole concept that there's this God that created all of us, and He watches each one of us individually. No, if anything, this is His entertainment. If you made us like we are just we are the Sims. Think about when you play yeah. the Sims. It's, it's like no different you, than well, like yeah. It could imagine be just a, it could so, be a sixteen-year-old alien video game. Yeah, he's playing this. He's playing Earth in some other dimension. <laughs> like he he's just playing this game. Like yeah. this is this is his game that he's playing. Because in Sim City, yeah. you would build yourself a big city, and then yeah. there was that button to cause a tornado or an earthquake or a fire or a giant monster and you fucking click that button after you That's what the your alien city. did it's like it's, it's like, like it prompts the text you- box do you want to kill Franz Ferdinand Ah, let's see what happens. Yeah. Holy shit, all the armies are fighting. <laughs> I mean, imagine a couple million years worth of evolution for a species. We would be nothing more than like an ant colony 
would Correct. be to a to a human. Like, oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Look at those ants running around that. Oh, look, the ants are they're fighting they're the ants that okay, live so, in the other barrier. Well, I'll stick a straw in there and see what happens. Like, it it, it wouldn't even register with you. Like, I, it, no. I I look at it in a really weird way too, and maybe this is not alien involvement. And I've said this before, but if you look at the planet, and and sometimes when I look, and this is like not high math. This is just like high thinking. Would be when you look at the planet in skyscrapers. How much does that remind you of bacteria growing that crystallizes right. in an infection or, or anything on a, on a biological scale that's a microcosm of what the planet <laughs> is? And then you start to think about, is the planet a cell and were the bacteria slowly killing it? And then is there something where the atmosphere is a protection-based thing and maybe meteors are freaking the, the, the antiviral thing trying to kill us, but for some reason there's still salvation. Like, and they haven't figured out just to destroy humanity because we're destroying a great cell. And I know that's really tin hat wearing, but if you think about it, it almost makes sense. Because yeah. we're slowly multiplying, yeah. we're oh, using we are, all the resources, we a, a we're attacking virus. each other, yeah. we're a fucking virus. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like methodology out of, again, the matrix, how you know humanity is a virus because we're impulsive and we're selfish as, as an existence. And we know no limitation as far as want or what we do with it. Yeah, and I was I, I rewatched The Matrix recently too and I was thinking about that cuz in the series they go through, you know, there's six iterations of Neo, right? And I was like, is it that hard to imagine that, you know, our development as is of humans right now is actually the sixth time that we've gone through this, right? Like we we know now that there's, you know, enough evidence that there's a huge meteor hit that happened around 14,000 years ago. We know humans have been around for roughly 160,000 years based off of recent findings. Like, what if we've gone through 20,000 years of development and developed good technology as a species, but something has happened that's caused us to hit the reset button and we're at like number five or six going through this, right? And I don't think that's that hard to imagine. I mean, I I like walking down the simulation theory because of of how – spaces like when you when you look at how we view space it's just nothing we can kind of see some things so it gives us this sense of oh there's other things out there but if you were creating this sim- a simulation to to run whatever it is that you're this experiment that you're trying to run how would you how would you keep them all here and and make it to where like like everything else would be empty and you'd give a little bit of hope that there's other shit out there but you see what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think if anybody, if you just go watch one general movie or documentary on the cosmos, it it really puts in perspective of how fucking unimportant a lot <laughs> of all of this is, if not all of it. And I don't mean to discredit our existence, but if you truly look at the cosmos, but there's no point. It to is our existence. it is nearly <laughs> incomprehensible to know what's out there, and we're making massive h- hypotheses and and gauges on how big this is. But we have no true understanding of what reality, time, and let alone things past mm-hmm. their galaxy are. Like we have, and, uh, but who knows? Like there, there's no way to ga- gauge that, and it's. It's almost terrifying, but hilarious when mm-hmm. I watch this stuff. I'm like, that I can't, just I can't brings fathom up a this. new point because again, our concept of time is one thing, and if they're if they're on a different time, yeah, plane, if they're four dimensional beings, then yeah. they could. How could they? If if one if one second to them is three hundred years for us, they yeah. can't even communicate to us. No. Well, yeah. No, exactly. It's the same thing of like, I don't know what the, the lifespan of a fly is, like three days. I'm sure that three days for them is a massive existence to us. It's nothing, right? So it's like the equation of time and reality is completely specific to that individual. I mean, like, or, or species. So to think that I mean, there's you get something. Out one sentence in five generations just passed in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> it's completely feasible. And to think how our brain is a processor and how we actually like take in information, there's something that could be, it's the difference between a computer in the 80s and a computer in 2020. There is no, there is no, it is completely different. So it's like, what's there to say that there isn't beings out there that process everything way faster, time slower for them? Who knows? I mean, it's... Well, there, it, there, there is for sure, right? right? Because the infinite universe are infinite possibilities. And right. ultimately, that is that is the reality, which is... We're living in, you know, a multi-dimensional, infinite universe around an infinite amount of possibilities. So, everything we discussed is a possibility. Like it's possible that, you know, somebody has we we reset humanity multiple different times. It's possible that 
you know, aliens have visited us from other planets in the past and they've injected our DNA. And if it hasn't happened here, it's happened on an earth that looks exactly like earth where we exist in that same reality there, but it has happened there, right? Because it's just, it goes on forever. That's the one thing we know. So for me, when I think about it, I'm like, oh man, this is like for, for UFOs to have visited if, if they, you know, I mean, we know what they, they are, like they've identified as UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Who the fuck knows? Like I was thinking about this the other day. If it's not, if, if it isn't aliens, which statistically speaking, it's not right. Statistically, if we're just using our, our little, you know, tiny fucking human primate brains to try to calculate what the fuck is going on. We're using the best math and the best model that we have available. It's not possible that it's aliens. And the reason that I say that is based on the, the, the expanse of the universe and just us being plucked out of the one planet that in the infinite fucking earths for an alien to visit is so statistically yeah, improbable. Well, wouldn't. but you could also disagree that statement and say, what if we're not what they're looking for? The thing with like the human condition, they might not even be able to see us what, by the way. What, what, if, he, what if, I mean, it's at all possible that there's only two in the entire inf- infinite, that there are only two civilizations that have, that have developed. Yeah. This yeah. is the Fermi paradox. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying, though, is like, what if, because humanity and, and everybody has their own way of thinking what they have going on is so fucking important. We do it in our own lives. We, I, I matter more than everything else, right? It's just yeah. how we're fucking wired. I'm glad you've at least admitted that. Now. Yeah, for sure. Of course. I'm the most important person. Everybody <laughs> is selfish in but, their own right. But think about it. Maybe the UFO are these other beings that are just cruising by real quick and going like, oh, fuck that shit show. We don't need any of that. And that was just a recon to, to, yeah. to get whatever we don't understand out there. Yeah. Or These are, beings could harvest freaking stars as energy. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. how complex how their big they are, how small is. they are. Like also, no gravity. Yeah. You know, you if if that's a manned craft, there has to be some form of anti gravity going on inside that craft because you can't. You, what's the odds of their gravity being the same? So their bodies being affected the same as as, as you would be down here. It wouldn't. I mean, there's, yeah, statistically, there's, like, statistically, it's not, right? It's just, that's why I was thinking. I was like, well, the most probable thing that it is, is that this is a highly classified program. What I think, at least, I think this is a highly classified program from, I think we are the most technologically sophisticated country on the planet. I think that's not really arguable at this point. I think this is a highly classified program, and I think that this is probably propaganda. I think that it's probably yeah information that they're disseminating for something, right? They're 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 preparing the population for something. something. Yeah, something. which the biggest question is not are these aliens? Is that a UFO? Is why is the government releasing yes, this, this is propaganda? Right now? Why because are we why doing are the this? other? Why, why are, are we other, releasing the yeah, fucking nah. videos? Like. Why? Why, why is now? Every other why country is going? DOD? Hey, what the fuck? Yeah, well, you You've look been at it, sitting maybe, on this. Maybe the top secret program got fucking saw, seen by like the, well, the fighter pilots, and they're like, "Well, we have to release it because these guys are going to go talk, and if they just they went have. away, then." That looks even more suspicious, so they can blame it on kind of hyperbole and, and extraterrestrial yeah, well, beings. Where I'm going with propaganda is if this is ours, if this was a program that we developed, we released this to scare two other big countries. Well, that like, could oh, be. Hey, hey, look what we got, here's, buddy. <laughs> here's a possibility, right? Which is we'll just throw out some fucking random ass shit, all right? So here's, here's <laughs> just an idea, okay? So here's an idea, which is. Diplomatic channels have – we have exhausted diplomatic channels with North Korea, Iran, and some of our other enemies. We're not going to release to them classified video of our program because they're going to leak it either way, right? Yeah. So this could be our way of saying, I need you to watch the news. <laughs> I need you to Absolutely. pay attention for the Absolutely. next couple of weeks <laughs> because – what we might decide to bring to you is something that you can't comprehend in this country. 
but I need you to go ahead and watch the news. Yeah, I love that. And that's spot. what I think. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Because also, too, I've been seeing grumblings all last night and this morning about we're all being groomed for something later later this year. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It, it feels, feels like, like this and, is and somebody mentioned something like, it's "Hey, a, a custom be prepared for October." I, it seems like that, right? It's like the pandemic, where they stay in your homes, wear the fucking mask, like get, get conditioned. Oh, fuck, let's add another tin hat on there. Maybe this was a way of just conditioning society to see if a quarantine and a stay at home would be functioning and see if the supply chain and all of that holds up. So this, I, I said this, this was an this exercise. Was, this was an exercise. Prepares for the landing. Five weeks ago. So all right, let's put tin hats landing. in the photo on this fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> because I like we it. don't want to spread the fucking alien virus because the landing – because. Basically, they could be going, well, fuck, we're going to have a new world order with a new master that is going to land. That's landing in October. And now they're going to uh, institute the rules now to condition (gasps) society to what the to behaviors obey. will be yeah. to obey. Wouldn't that be intense? Bro, like there's this being that came not- in and was like, hey... You guys are cool to stay in your houses. We're going to walk around. There's going to be a curfew, curfew, and we're going to harvest some of your fucking core of your planet because we need to refuel our ship. Play cool. We won't wipe out your whole planet. But if you're fucking stupid, we're going to fuck you up. Yeah. 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 We're going to fuck you up. That would be intense to be under alien fucking command. Right? Oh. This is oh. wild because I am not I am not far from not believing it. I wonder if they can give you <laughs> orgasms with telepathy. That would be cool. Listen. Sorry, I'm just thinking about positives. You're not that fucking the alien the first second we see it. Come on. Okay, you can fuck the alien, but we get to watch. <laughs> you know if there was one dude that's going to get fucking sucked up into that ship to bang the female aliens, it's probably going to be me. Yeah, it is. And the Fed Bye, is just, humanity. The Fed is just like releasing all the dollars because they're like, money's not going to be worth shit either way, so it doesn't matter. Like, pump it all in because at the end of the day, we're going to be run by somebody else for a while. Like, well, that's I mean, the what, memes. What, yeah. The memes are all like 2020. Like, can't get it any worse. Like, it does feel like this year is going to continue to be a roller coaster. Can that you, we're not. Really yeah. Can you imagine that, that the White House got word that these dudes are landing in October and they come down and they're like, "You guys all been fucking." Which up. goes back to that other video I wanted to do was like why Trump decided to do Space Force. Like, one of his first moves out of the gate was like, <laughs> Space Force! This is all lined up! It's yeah, it's too Force. real! <laughs> Space Force... Here's some UFO because, footage. Because yeah. we might be trained. He might have. He might. The art of the deal. He got us a ship. <laughs> he got us a ship out of the deal. That's the why we're starting the deal. Force. That's we got why, ship. why Trump is so pissed off with everything. He's like, man, the stupid virus and China and Iran. He's, He's like, like, I just. There's fucking, aliens. I just, I just can't got tell us you guys about it yet. <laughs> if any Donald Trump got into the White House and said, I want to know everything about Area 51, and they told him, he goes, get him on the phone. <laughs> I want a ship. He had to call the for you. <laughs> now we're per- now we're grooming the entire population to get ready because yeah. the United States is about to have a fucking star destroyer. <laughs> right, Secretary of Defense is like, all right, we need to quarantine people just in case it goes real bad. Uh, we'll build this wall to kind of get some of society looking that way, and then we'll release a little spaceshipy thing, and then yeah, as long as I don't have to call the alien supreme leader. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, right? but you like to be led. I don't know. Uh, let's just. My elk hunt is in September, so <laughs> so you'll get an elk first. <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> aliens, like, at least be cool about it. Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be nice? Like, we're, we can kill you whenever we want. You guys have four months, have fun, because then it would be a crazy four months of just like it'd be pretty crazy sex and killing, probably across the board. I think uh, it there wouldn't would be, fun. be a let lot me, let of me bloodlust. I think there would be a lot of bloodlust. If people were like, okay, we got four months, I think people would. Would would they would devolve into yeah like they would devolve into oh, yes. some very very violent tendencies, but I mean I think that's probably the dark look at it right where I mean you're gonna wear masks you're gonna stay in your home you know we're going to flood the economy with with really really inexpensive dollars and we're gonna forgive debt. I don't know, man. I think I, I it, it does all kind of fit together if you're if you're if you're putting it together in a logical sequence. You're like, wow, all this shit might not matter in a few months. Yeah. Whoa. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does kind of fit together. Also, if we got to wear masks because the aliens can't fucking breathe 
whatever we have all the time, right? So it's like they're conditioning. There we go. They're conditioning us to wear a mask because something part of our lung and saliva because. might infect them. And they're like, y'all are wearing masks all- when we're doing this refuel. Be- be- real yeah. Trump got us a fucking ship, dog. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is why you, this is, it all lines up. Time Magazine, Businessman like, of the Year. Yeah. Trump makes sh- handshake deal with fucking Supreme yeah. Leader Alien. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, like, they were like, this is life, huh? And they were like, hey, yeah. they were like, all right, is there anything wanting to this? He's like, well, yeah, could you get rid of Kim, J- the fucking North Korean guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah. done. Is he in surgery? <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Boop. He's gone. Okay, moving on. Anything okay, else? Okay, so <laughs> you, guys, you guys get sick if we breathe on you. All right. We'll get, we'll, trust me, we'll get the whole population accustomed to wearing masks. We'll be all right. We got this. We got this. Yeah. We're yeah, getting they, the ship. They can't have large crowds because they don't want to have multiple people that see the same thing that can validate what's going on, right? So if you're in your house, you're onesie twosies everywhere and there's no crowds. And they can control yeah. what? 50, what 100, 300 people, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, like stadiums full of people can't see some shit going on going, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, the aliens are like, hey, keep it sub 10. We're comfortable with that mm-hmm. numeric. Yeah, because then you can hide the information. You can be like, all right, some shit's and going on. And they're down. like, hey, they're sitting at that deal table and they're like, um, we hate the like, and I don't know this might put a damper on the deal, but our entry point to get that core fuel is Los Angeles County. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fine, fine, yeah, fine, fine. Make the hole. It's going to be huge. Huge, huge, huge. Can you move it up to San Francisco? Pelosi's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Any way you can enter in San Francisco. <laughs> Man. I oh, think shit. we just discovered... What is going on? We if we're have. right, we better get a Nobel Peace Prize. Holy right? shit, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean... Or a if, Nobel Idiot Prize. What if yeah. we, <laughs> to, what All of them. Could you, could you imagine this episode goes up and we get fucking raided? And- maybe, they'll, maybe they'll come up with like a, a Brovet Peace Prize. We'll, we'll get a Brovet Peace Prize. <laughs> Brovet Peace Prize. Brovet Peace Prize. Uh, yeah, maybe we got that. <laughs> maybe. You know what, what if they came down for coffee and then we, we had a new subscriber base to Alien Ships on the Best Coffee Club subscription at BlackRifleCoffee.com. We realize that their planet's four times the size of the sun and has a hundred million times the population as ours and they all need coffee subscriptions they all need coffee subscriptions <laughs> and guess what we have the best coffee subscription in america why is that evan because <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> you know it's, it's fresh roasted coffee right there in nashville or salt lake city utah we've got a wide variety of coffees to choose from. It's you can pause the subscription anytime you want. You can choose the amount of bags. You can choose where it's going to be sent. You can get the exclusive coffee club if you get registered with your email on time. You can also get our new RTD on subscription. That drink. thing is awesome. Let's do let's do a fun exercise for the for the listeners because with all this tinfoil hat talk and alien talk, we need an ECS that's alien. Oriented. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, we do. I like it. it. Is. Yeah, we do. I, I like have great ideas. Yeah, supreme leader. <laughs> well, space bear is coming out, so uh, we're prepping. We're, yeah. we're prepping. We're, we're conditioning. He's the expeditionary, though. Yeah. We need something about a foreign yeah. being, like a. Look at the timing of that. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Right. Space bear is coming out. That's tomorrow. the next one in the shoot. Yeah. Tomorrow, space bear is launched. So, if you haven't registered your email for the ECS. It is a incredible ride of amazing coffees. You got to log on, look at exclusive coffee subscription, then register your email for the product. We only have so many slots. The reason we only have so many slots is these are micro lot coffees. We can't really get too many bags of it because that's micro lot. That means it's you know very small, obviously. So we're doing the best that we can to to one keep the highest quality that we can throughout the ECS while maintaining the numbers, but we can't really grow that thing to too many people. So you got to register your email, register for ECS. Space Bear is coming out. The next one in the shoot, guys. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Logan right. and I did a trip to Guatemala. It's going to be pretty epic. Oh, wow. Yeah, that guy. That's the one. That's next. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think we, we need an alien one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. work in that. I want yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like yeah. Space Cowboy or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'll come, we'll come up with something. Art of yeah. the deal. Or, huh? yeah, it yeah, it just needs to be Trump shaking the hand of an alien with a giant ship in the background and yeah. us just like, 
Didn't we yeah. already talk about that where there was like currency and deals with some aliens that Trump? We had an episode a while back that we went. No, down I think that, that was Rebel. Alex Jones. He says there's aliens living under under San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. The lizard people. Yeah, the yep. lizard, the people. lizard people. That's what liberals are. I can't That's, believe that we were able to just figure people. out this whole thing I know. by just four of us sitting here. Just. Sitting here for an hour talking on a podcast. Yeah. You're welcome, America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we're sorry. Or we're not yeah. sure sorry. which one. But, but we, you know, look forward to seeing a photo of us all wearing tinfoil hats yeah, on the yeah. cover of this one. Yeah, yeah. this is a good one. That <laughs> this is a really good one. <laughs> Seriously, though, if you listen to this tonight, whoever, go watch something on, like, Netflix about the cosmos, and it will yeah. validate some of these statements. Because I don't know if – I think all of us are in line with that. I – rarely watch any like entertainment based mm-hmm. stuff i watch like planet earth blue pa- planet the cosmos uh, black holes you know and how much we don't know is fucking hilarious don't i know yeah. what you're gonna say i said black holes i'm not talking about no, buttholes. okay yeah. well, no i was, was also saying if you're interested in the the whole uh giant alien conspiracy it's called the anunnaki that's what they're called anunnaki the anunnaki. anunnaki yeah anunnaki and uh they, they supposedly landed in sumeria so Babylon back in the day. So if you're interested in that, just Google it. It's super easy. You can go down the rabbit hole. It's it's a fun, you know, night of insomnia. You can you can just burn some time, you know, investigating that one. There's a lot of super fun little threads in that Anunnaki bullshit. I'm just stoked that Air Force One, after all this is said and done, is going to be a spacecraft. Yeah. yeah. How super. cool is that? You're just at the Daytona 500 and fucking <sighs> Fuck whoever the Star president Destroyer is. Just <laughs> <laughs> And it just teleports down an American flag. You're just like, we're the greatest country, bro. <laughs> you, know, yeah, you know, yeah, kidding me. You know, kidding me. That's one of those things. So it's kind of like the other the other big superpowers are going to be like, fuck, you guys got one of those. Like, fuck, we can't do anything about this. Don't like, make us spend <laughs> send the spaceship we're on. <laughs> Don't make us send yeah. it. I think France has already uh, uh, capitulated. So they've, they've, yeah, been, they've had that one on the drawn up for a long time. <laughs> they're, 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 they, they just have a white flag over the country or at this we're point. We're okay with like, it. Fuck it. We're good. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, All right. Thanks well, a lot, yeah. fellas. People, everybody.